when I went to high school, yes, where did I you went to, to a Moy Girls. Can we just leave it to a Moy Girls? One of the many Moy Girls <laughs> that are there. Many girls. Constituted somewhere within <gasps> Let me a region tell you, in, be in, sure in Kenya. where you'll sleep tonight. <laughs> in Kenya. <laughs> so, um, Central. So by the time I did KCPE, yeah. there was a lot of ethnic tension mm -hmm. happening at mm -hmm. that time. Mm -hmm. So I mean there was Nakuru stuff happening Joro. So there was those stuff happening mm -hmm. anyway. So somehow I got to find myself at Moy Girls Senior. Mm -hmm. Big up to our principal, mm -hmm. Miss Njeru, mm -hmm. because Yani, mm -hmm. she put all of us like this. Like yeah, you and the Elfiland, mm -hmm. you and your Maasai culture, mm -hmm. you and your, you know. Mm -hmm. And she worked a lot with um other uh, leading principals to to fight early marriages. Mm -hmm. Uh, so and and uh, FGM, mm. uh, so the girls would come to our school mm. for high school. So you see, my eyes keep being opened okay. to to cultures, yeah. to to health conversations, yeah. to community. Yeah. I remember there were seasons I would notice that my my classmates would drop every every maybe every third term or every second term, mm. either because they've gone for initiation mm. or they've gone to get married. Mm. You know, mm. some were so bad that if you ask them what your aspirations were, it would be, I, I want to finish from four, I go get married because there's this guy waiting for you, you know? And I'm like, wait, how do you, how do you live? How is that life? But you know, you can't judge. So how, how do, do you, were you, were you prepared, based on this level of um, like access and privilege that you had before, mm. What, do you feel you are prepared enough for a life in a senior? I think so. Mm -hmm. Because I will not even brand it as a privilege and affluence. Mm. I'll just say it as exposure. Exposure, right. Because we were exposed to many, many things. things yeah. Like if we were doing community work, we would always go to Moranga mm -hmm. with my father. Mm. See, quote unquote, as the Bible puts it, the list of these. Mm. You know, um, we got to do a lot of uh, Kibera walks mm. or visiting the slums mm. and just just how my father interacted or my parents interacted with anyone and everyone mm -hmm. gave us the opportunity to treat people that mm -hmm. way so even as i'm meeting all these new things for mm. me it's like oh it's their way of life mm. so there's no judgment right. but asking the questions that mm. i can understand mm. eh? mm -hmm. so what happens mm. you know mm. then you just get to know how mutilation affects these women mm -hmm. over time mm -hmm. you know so you're sort and of getting the first-hand experience yeah, by yourself now yeah. you're the one on the ground yeah so what i would notice mm -hmm. is that uh, third time so go go for holiday the second time mm -hmm. third time when they come they are all nini. they become women they have become women mm. So as we are girls, mm. so you'll find them huddling, mm -hmm. you'll find them, mm. you know, all, or, or they'll have some vulgar words. Oh. But I thank God because our principal was very upfront, mm. very upfront. Mm. Another thing um, that we could do at the time, because mm -hmm. we were like literally in a, an arid place, mm. anyone who sees it can, can attest, mm. uh, was we planted trees. Mm. Mm. So we planted and we watered trees mm. we had a teacher called uh, mr orwa i think yeah mm. so when he's on duty just know you have to flood the trees he used to mm. say if i come with a boat i want to float and the other day i visited the senior it's beautiful mm. it's literally like a gem you know because mm. the trees have grown it's mm. been over 20 years mm. of, of that mm. And uh, I'm grateful. I'm I'm grateful that that moment uh, happened, made yeah. me. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. And most of the girls you say were from yes from the community. Yes, from the community. Mm. We also had uh, some girls from Nairobi. Mm. I mean, all over all over mm. uh, Kenya. Mm. But it was really good. Mm. And I mean, there are also movers and shakers in their mm. world as mm. well. Mm. Uh, we we also have a WhatsApp group. Mm. <gasps> we mm. keep in touch. Mm. Uh, we meet up once in a while, mm. but doing phenomenal mm. things, mm. amazing things. And it was a um, welcome way of living. You know, girls only school was, yeah, yeah. was also a thing, you know, to, yeah. to experience your adolescence, mm -hmm. your teenage life uh, in a girls only school. How, yeah. how was that? Uh, what kind of teenage life was that for you? Imagine, mm -hmm. no drama. Mm -hmm. 
I know I and people tell me that oh you didn't experience it when you're a teenager you'll experience it when you're older I'm older I'm like 20, how 30, wild is 40. okay what are we waiting for yeah. what are, what is that thing yeah. so my teenagehood was very calm mm. I think we can ask my mother mm. but it was a very calm mm. season mm. Um, also because I knew maybe again what I'm saying about the seasons mm-hmm. I remember going to the school and it was as white because of the, the sand mm-hmm. the, the the soil is white mm-hmm. um and my father just looked at me and told me you know what mm-hmm. you just have four years mm-hmm. they'll fly by so mm-hmm. fast mm-hmm. and that gave me all the calmness i needed mm-hmm. and i breezed through my four years mm-hmm. um got my very strong c plus i mm-hmm. missed i think one point mm-hmm. for b minus mm-hmm. But it's all right. Mm. So they called me an average student. <laughs> I will prove to you how average looks like. Yeah.